Hey there, and hope you're doing awesome today. We are gonna be talking more about liners and specifically liner materials, liner characteristics, and different types of liners, and kind of touch on pros and cons of each. You're gonna be seeing all Alps liners today, and so just wanted to explicitly say this is not a sponsored video or a paid promotion video. If I'm talking about a product, it's because it's one that I use all the time and that I believe in and I know that it's good. I've had terrific experience with Alps and their customer service. Huge shout out to Brian and Nick. I sent an email to Brian. Nick gave me a call that same day asking for details on what I needed and they were in the mail right away. So awesome customer service. The fact that I, you know, if I need a new casting liner, I can just call or shoot an email and it's out to me the next day. You know, I even had a therapist trim down a liner and she trimmed it down too short. And so I also was able to replace that for us. Um, so things like that, that makes a big difference. So thank you, Brian and Nick and Alps for being awesome. So let's dive in. When it comes to liners, you got kind of three main materials. You have thermoplastic elastomers or TPE, urethane and silicone. Most if not all of Alps liners are silicone. They're gonna distribute pressure evenly and they have more firmness and durability compared to TPE or urethane. The TB and urethane liners are going to flow a little bit more, especially the urethane. When you're in one of those liners and you put down pressure and there's an area of higher pressure that that gel material is going to compress and move out of the way. So they're gonna have more cushioning, but less stability. And then once that pressure is released, it's gonna go back to its original shape. But with the urethane, that's gonna take a little bit more time. It's not gonna return immediately. If you are curious, uh, just hop on the manufacturer's website and they should list the material for your particular liner, if you're curious. So when it comes to some of the characteristics of a liner, if you're just, you know, picking up a liner, you have no idea what it is, what are some of the things you need to do to just kind of assess its characteristics and how it might function. We're gonna look at the distributive stress, silicone liners, it's gonna be more equal distribution, and then your urethane and TPE liners, it, they're gonna have a little bit more flow, where they're gonna flow from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. You're also gonna look at how it reduces shear forces. Some liners, the insides are a lot more tacky and you're gonna have increased friction, so it's gonna hold better on your limb, but that might cause shear forces, especially if you have more delicate skin. And then other liners are gonna be more slick and have less friction. You're also gonna look at its elasticity or its ability to stretch, and you're gonna look at that in two directions. So you can look at that longitudinally, how much is that gonna stretch up and down, and then also circumferentially, This is their high density gel, so it would work well for active patients, but we use it for uh, a lot of our patients It does a good job of supporting loose distal tissue. They also have a general purpose liner that is not as dense. So their general purpose is less firm and is gonna have more stretch, both vertically and circumferentially. Another thing you can look at, most of all these liners are gonna be about the same when it comes to transferring heat away from your limb. There are a couple liners that have a cooling matrix that try to reduce the amount of heat. That is one thing that we'll be talking about in a future video as well, heat and sweat management. So besides the material that is impacting those characteristics, uh, there's also the fabric matrix on the outside that in, can impact those characteristics and how the liner functions along with a uh, liner thickness. Liners are going to come in different thicknesses, but it's usually, you know, three millimeter, six millimeter. I think there's some liners that even go up to nine millimeter. I'm typically always using six millimeter liners. I've typically found they're easier to roll on than the thinner liners, especially it for 
uh, my transfemoral patients that have a larger residual limb. They're also going to offer you more protection and absorb more shock. And an easy way to test and feel that difference. Here's our three millimeter liner. And here is our six millimeter liner. This three millimeter liner, you're definitely going to feel more of that shock in your arm compared to the six millimeter liner. You also have some liners that come tapered. So they do have a liner that's gonna be their six millimeter in the front and then their thinner three millimeter in the back. And that can help if you're getting knee bunching or tightness at the knee, difficult to bend your knee. It can be a little bit more comfortable. So especially if you're doing more active activities like bicycling, things like that. There's also some liners that are the same thinner thickness around the top, but then as you go down the liner, it will get thicker around the bottom. Jumping into the different types of liners, you got a locking liner that has this distal umbrella to screw in either a locking pin or a lanyard. This type of liner and suspension is nice because it's quick, it's easy, it's simple. You don't have any sort of sleeve on the outside. And you also have that audible feedback that you're locked in, securing your limb, and you don't have to worry about it falling off. On the other hand, though, sometimes you do have to worry about it not coming off. We are typically using bulldog locks and don't run into a lot of issues with them, but every once in a while we have had a patient with the pin lock suspension system get stuck in their prosthesis and so that will definitely be another future video as well uh, what to do to get out of your prosthesis one of the other disadvantages is you do have to make sure that you have this pin aligned correctly when you're donning the liner and donning the prosthesis because if it's not either you're not going in or you force it in and you can potentially get stuck Next up, we have a cushion liner to be used with a suspension sleeve. And you can see it doesn't have that distal umbrella. The socket will have some sort of valve, um, so it lets air out, but not air in. When you put the liner on and then put your limb into the socket, it's gonna push all that air out, and then it's gonna have a sleeve that's part way on the top of the socket and that you're gonna roll up over onto your limb. With that system, you do have reduced pissing compared to the pin system. You know, it's a really simple system. You just put on the liner, you don't have to worry about pin placement. You stick your limb in the socket and roll up the sleeve and you're good to go. But, you know, with the suspension sleeve, it's another added step and you gotta have appropriate hand strength, hand dexterity to be able to roll that sleeve or if you need to replace a sleeve if you're doing that by yourself and also if that sleeve gets some wear and tear it can cause a hole in the sleeve that is gonna cause you to have reduced suction or to lose suction. The other little caveat to keep in mind, also with the suspension sleeve, it does cover a fair amount of your socket. So if you have a design on your socket or would like to have a design on your socket, just know that that suspension sleeve is gonna cover up a fair amount of it. You could also argue that the suspension sleeve with the cushion liner is a little bit more cosmetic. It's a little bit more streamlined. You don't have the added build height where you're putting in that lock and you also don't have pins sticking out to the side. Another main liner type is a seal-in liner. It has that gusset, that ring, that is going to create a seal between the liner and the socket at that ring. Same thing, you're gonna roll on the liner. With this liner, it might be in that gusset, it might be a little bit more difficult to roll on, but they are, I believe they do have ones now that you just roll on the liner and then you can roll on that ring to different various heights along your residual limb. And then again, it's gonna have a one-way valve. You're gonna push your limb into the socket. Sometimes they'll have you use a lubrication. You'll push your limb into the socket and then it will seal 
at that ring. So one of the benefits, a lot of people say it feels like it's more part of their limb. It's a little bit more intimate fit. You're not gonna have to wear that suspension sleeve, but you can have it as a type of secondary suspension, especially if you're doing high impact activities. But with just the seal in liner, you're just gonna be getting that suction at that ring and below. And the ability for the liner in the socket to maintain suction is gonna be impacted if there's volume fluctuations. So that's kind of the quick rundown. Let me know if you have any questions or let me know your experiences with any or all of these. There's a lot of variables when it comes to liner selection and that's related as well to the type of suspension. There's pros and cons to each and a lot of it just boils down to how does your residual limb present? Are there any concerns when it comes to your residual limbs such as you know volume fluctuations, delicate skin, adhered scar tissue, things like that. And mainly what type of activities are you doing? What type of activities are you wanting, wanting to get back to? What are the other environmental factors, other health factors that could potentially impact what liner and what suspension system would be best for you to be able to get back to those activities and meet your goals. So please let me know any other questions you have. Please share your experiences and you guys have an awesome day.